should get started. I just want to welcome everyone who's here, and I think we'll have a number of people joining us uh, yet in the next few minutes, but um, I want to welcome you here. Um, this is a WASC uh, fireside chat series, and we've been trying to do them about once a month uh, throughout COVID, and we will continue uh, to do these on Zoom until we're ready to resume normal sort of programming. So if anyone has any ideas that they'd like um, us to consider, um, we'll, uh, I'm sure we'll be having one either right at the end or towards uh, the early part of next month. Um, other than that, uh, I would say look to your uh, um, emails because soon we'll be announcing when we'll be doing a virtual um, Women of St. Chrysostom's spring meeting and, um, and uh, we'll, we'll have to be lunching like you guys are uh, at your house. Um, uh, Living. So, so right now, I, right now I know a few people have got something to nosh on and uh, we'll have to be doing that, but we will try to get together and do some visiting and uh, have, a, have a meeting. Um, with that said, I'm gonna turn the program over to our hostess for this evening. And uh, Anne Brinsmaid is going to be um, sharing some thoughts with the, um, with the heads of the Flower Guild. So take it away, Anne. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, Liz. And welcome to Angie Yorath and Roger Stanley. We're so happy to have you here with us this evening. And thank you for inviting us. Yes, and, and to have people, of course, now we're trying to make it back into the church, but we're glad to see you all in the church since you all are the ones that beautify it on a regular basis. So thank you very, very much. And we're glad you're, you've been doing it even during the time that we just had our <laughs> online services. Everything looked wonderful thanks to you. So uh, we, we all appreciate that very much. So uh, both of you have been very involved through the years. And how was it that you happened to come to St. Chris? What brought you each of you to St. Chris? Work. <laughs> <laughs> when I was studying at Northwestern, um, Dr. Lodine, who was the organist here at the time, uh, retired and I served as the interim organist and choir director here uh, before Richard was hired. So, um, so work is what brought me here. And then I was away for a long time. And then when the nine o'clock service was added to the schedule, Richard called me and said, how about coming back and joining us? So that was 23 years ago. So work is what brought me here. Well, and we're, and we're glad it did. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> and how about you, Angie? Well, I came here in about 2012, I think. Um, I'm a transplant from St. John's Church in Old Irving Park. Um, I came here and heard the music and then I stayed. <laughs> and at the time there was no flowers at, at the altar. And I was like, why are there no flowers at the altar? And eventually I got to know Roger and he explained what was going on. And that's a whole other story, but um, I said, well, I'd like to help with flowers. And that's how it started. Now, now, how have you each become involved with flowers? Because of course, Roger has been involved with music for many years. And Angie, I believe you had a career elsewhere before you jumped into the flower bed. So. <laughs> well, I, music and flowers developed concurrently for me. Um, even as a child, um, mother would always have a flower garden and I would go out and pick flowers and bring them in and put them in some sort of container. Um, and when I didn't do that, I was at the piano practicing or playing. And so concurrently, these two interests developed. And then, oh, when I was in middle school, um, uh, one of our church members was a retail florist and saw that I was taking an interest 
in doing flowers and gave me some of my initial training back then. Um, so throughout my life, flowers and music have just been back and forth constantly. That seems like a nice, a nice <laughs> balance. A nice balance, actually. Yeah. I was um, brought up in a vicarage, so my mother did the church flowers with all the church ladies, and I used to go along and help and pick the flowers and fill the buckets up and be the skivvy. And um, while I was practicing the organ, because I played the organ too back in the day, and uh, so I've always been doing flowers, and wherever I've been at the church, I've kind of wangled my way into doing church flowers. Um, as I say now, we say we are professionals because <laughs> we are, and we both have our own flower businesses. And I started mine about five years ago now. Um, before that, I was a physical therapist specializing in neurosurgery, and that kind of burnt me out. So I needed to do something creative and beautiful. And um, now I do, and I'm very lucky because I've been able to do many weddings and funerals and celebrations of all sorts. And um, yeah. so that's my new profession, I love it. Same with him. Well, so for both of you, so for both of you, the flowers have provided a balance with your other, with your other pursuits. Now Indeed. you you mentioned the, the many things that you've been doing. So what are some of the favorite projects that you have been involved in with? As far as flowers are concerned? Uh-huh. I think the one thing that I really love and I thought we did really well, actually, was the um, Guild Festival. It was three, three or four years ago. Yeah, in, a, in June. And we showed off the Alter Guild's beautiful silver and needlework and all the treasures that they have hidden away. And we had stations in the church um, different times of the year. So different church years. So we had the purple, we, we had the white, we had the red, we had um, the green. And we did different stations. And um, we had such fun doing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We yes, I, rem I remember that festival. I mean, some of the, some of the displays were very unusual too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did anybody else remember that particular uh, floral, very floral activity, you know, yeah. You had them in all these nooks and crannies and so forth. Yeah, all, yeah mm -hmm. that was, that was uh, very nice. Now you mentioned doing weddings as well as the church. Uh, do, you, do you all do weddings elsewhere or do you uh, maintain just St. Chrysostom's parishioners? <laughs> well, I do whatever anybody does. I've done some weddings here, which has been lovely. And I have done weddings all over the world, actually. <laughs> yes. I've done many in England. I've done some in Colorado. I've done some in um, Indiana and Wisconsin. Wisconsin. That's right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, and here. Roger says, why didn't you take me to some of those? <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, I'll go. I'll go wherever you want me to go, you know? And they're all different flavors, different sizes. They can be small intimate weddings and huge massive weddings. So it doesn't, you know. And Roger actually is really in my right hand man too, because you, sometimes you just really need help. Well, I know you had the, the pleasure of doing your own daughter's wedding during this COVID season. <laughs> yes, we did. We had, um, well, actually, we did the wedding flowers here, or did you do them? I can't even remember. Um, <laughs> you and I did the flowers here. Okay. And you, you did the flowers. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, you can get them. You know. Yeah, we nearly forgot the bouquet. I did the <laughs> in the garage is where I do my studio work. And we got in the car on the freeway. And I went, oh my God, the bouquet. So we had to drive all the way home again. <laughs> and go in the studio and cut it and everything. Anyway. Yes, and it was lovely. Well, well, that's wonderful that you could do that and that it, it turned out so nicely. I saw some of the pictures, you know, despite the, despite the year, the year yes. of changes. Yes, yeah. Now, Quite speaking of, of beauty, I remember uh, not too long ago, uh, per, uh, you, month, I guess it was in February, uh, you had a special photo session that we missed out on. Uh, in which you had done the flowers and they came and took pictures at your house? Oh, that yes. one. Gosh, yes. actually, I can't remember what you <laughs> yeah, Yes, amazing. well, 
I was beginning to feel I needed some, some creative this is very rich, right? ever. So I decided to do a, a storybook, which I'm actually put together yet called Angie Lily at home. Angie Lily is the name of my company. And so we did Angie Lily at home in a Victorian farmhouse. And that was my house. And a friend of mine was a photographer. He came to take pictures. And uh, Roger was playing piano to so make people very welcome. <laughs> and uh, we had his leg tea laid out on the table and stuff. And then I wanted to do Angie Lily in the desert where I've just been and then continue it and it will be a feature when I get my act together. Well, we're sorry we missed out on that. That was the original time that we were going to do our chat. We were going to do it mm -hmm. in yes, conjunction with that photo shoot, but there was a conflict with the church schedule and so we couldn't. That's right. but, yeah, that's what I'm yeah. <laughs> but again, some of the pictures from that look like it was a really fun, a really fun event. Now, I, around you, you have the Easter season. How do you plan for the special seasons there at the church for what you're going to do? Okay, well, take you through this because it's quite involved. <laughs> okay. Uh, when we start planning for Christmas, Easter, and other major festivals, first of all, we look for the season. What's the color for this particular season? And then we start developing a plan of which elements of the church need to be emphasized with flowers. Um, and we try not to do the same thing every time. We try to change it up a bit. So we decide where we're going to place flowers. Uh, then we have the color selection. Then we... Uh, talk to our wholesaler and place our flower order. Um, depending on what time of year it is, certain flowers are not available unless we want to pay an extreme amount of money for them. So we see what's in season. And then um, we also look at the traditions. Um, at Christmas, there are certain traditions that people want to see flowers placed at certain locations, so we try to accommodate that. And um, again, change it up so that people just don't walk in and say, oh, they did that again. Um, but try to bring the floral beauty to the inside of the church to help illuminate certain architecture elements, as well as to symbolize the story of the gospel for any particular day. Um, so certain flowers have meaning, and uh, if there's a certain story in the scripture, we try to find flowers that will represent that particular scripture, plus being seasonal. So it's a process that we take weeks to plan. And then once our order of flowers come in, we have to process the flowers appropriately and then schedule the work time, which is generally at the last minute. <laughs> so to, you can see behind me here, I don't know if you can. Um, this is the- Would you like to, did you want to uh, get up and show us a little bit more about uh, the Easter arrangements you've done? <laughs> I mean, I, I know you mentioned moving your moving your things around, so I didn't yeah. know. But it, how... So you see here that we've got lilies and tulips and roses and different types of greenery, and they're blooming more now than they did on Easter day. So they look really good, quite good today. Um, and obviously lilies is very traditional for Easter. And um, so we've got different types of lilies. And in the past we've used um, arum lilies or canna lilies as you call them. Um, so that's pretty much what we do, but we planned this uh, about six weeks ago. And we don't want you to always see the same things as she said. So we decided that because we're on camera at the moment, 
we have to be very careful where we place everything so that the camera picks it up. And um, so that's why everything's very centered and there's not much around the outside because the camera's not picking it up. But also the camera will dull down certain colors. So we've chosen for this Easter, we chose white, cream and peach. And they shine really beautifully under the lights, the camera lights we've got on right now. Um, uh, excuse me, Lynn Valentine, can you mute your phone unless you want to speak because we're getting just your, um, just the little green dot for your phone quite frequently as you move around the noise comes and most, most are muted. So if you could do that, that would be great. Okay. Um, how, how do you do that? Uh, um, if you don't have a mute button on your phone so that. Uh, oh. Um, no, I think it's star something outside. Okay, sounds good. Thanks. We have an audience. Oh, now. sorry, that's wrong. Um, come and say hello. The other thing that we've done, which we do at Easter, is the Paschal candle, and that has to kind of keep going for weeks. So we have to refresh it and make sure we have enough flowers to keep it going. Because, and that's why I constantly have an extra bucket of flowers. And if anybody was at church on Sunday, they saw me walking out with this bucket. <laughs> There's the extra <laughs> bucket. <laughs> it's my emergencies. And because you never know, things can happen, you know, disasters, flowers can get the droop or whatever. So we always have an extra bucket of emergency flowers. But here it's too hot. So I had to take them home and stick them in my cooler in my studio. Ah. One day I get a cooler here so we won't have to be doing that. Ah, yes. Now, Roger mentioned uh, placing the flower order, but uh, Angie, do you grow fl any flowers at home to add to the displays or? Yeah, I do actually. Yeah, I do. Um, and especially greenery. Uh, and I would love to make the church garden more of a picking garden <laughs> so that we had some, so we have some things that we can pick in the church, you know, because Things love to be picked, so they keep growing if they're picked. Um, but yeah, I grow dahlias and what else do I grow? Zinnias and all sorts of things. Um, but you can t it doesn't really happen yet. It's beginning to happen now. Um, tulips, I've got rows and rows of tulips in my garden. Um, so yeah, I do grow things. Mm -hmm. Well, that's well, good. Now, Roger, I know sometimes in your pictures, I see some tulips popping up, but I don't know if those are yours or, or your neighbors. So <laughs> I don't know if you're allowed to pick them. <laughs> no, I, I, I purchased mine from either the wholesaler or the grocery store. <laughs> uh, well, I'm, I'm sure they appreciate your purchases there. <laughs> Now, uh, I know that you all did a wonderful flower arranging workshop uh, before all of this started. Uh, do you plan to do any, to conduct any more workshops? Uh, perhaps yeah, we're we can to do start whatever. getting together again? We love to teach and we love to um, share our skills and love of flowers and anybody's welcome. I mean, We've done ones where it's not involved people from the Flower Guild, and then other times we've done it just for the Flower Guild because it's very little higher level, if you know what I mean. Um, but yeah, I mean, we would love to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, great. <laughs> well, maybe maybe we can uh, plan for something like that in the in the future when we can start mm -hmm. getting back together again. That would be that would be wonderful because I know everybody who went had a, you know, came came out with this marvelous marvelous <laughs> centerpiece. I believe is what they made. I mean, like to, I mean, I know St. Chris is known for its music, but wouldn't it be lovely to be known for its flowers as well? Yeah. We think it'd be, people would come to church and feel lifted up with the flowers and the music together. Mm -hmm. yeah. Angie, yeah. when is the Flower Guild going to start um, working again in its normal rotation? Do you, do you have a feeling that's, about that? Yeah, that's one of our, my plans. Um, I've been planning weddings all week, but... Um, if we're having in-person services, which I think we are, are we, Mr. Hoskins? We to continue. For yeah. Um, we, I'm going to send out an email, and I'm going to ask all the previous people on the Flower Guild who's interested in staying and coming in and doing the flowers, um, and then we'll see who we've got. Um, but if anybody's interested, they just have to send me an email, and I can 
put them on the list. So what happens is the sort of layers, people who've just started, they join a team and we slowly teach you how to do it. So you don't have to know anything. Um, you just have to be enthusiastic, vaguely artistic and good fun. Do you now, want to give us your email address, Angie, so that people can um, yes. contact you? Do you want me to speak over sure, the Sure, get to say it right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's M-A, as it ma, mother, Yorath, Y-O-R-A-T-H, at sbcglobal.net. Great, thank you. Well, we can add that to the notes. Now, where do you all get your inspiration for the different ones? Because I know that as, as pictures have been uh, published of different arrangements that you have done for different locations, many are quite different from the others. So in other words, it's not that you just follow the same format all the time. So where, do you, where have you gotten your inspiration? For me, the first inspiration is the flowers themselves. Uh, if you listen, flowers will speak to you and say, I don't want to be in that arrangement. <laughs> Often uh, we go to the wholesalers when we don't know what to do and we stand in the cooler and we look around and then it comes to us. It's very, very weird, but it happens and it's very right every time, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. And, so it's and, a very spiritual thing, actually. Yes, well, very much so. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Then after we see the flowers, then the container that we plan to use also provides inspiration, mm -hmm. as well as the location where they will be displayed. So the flowers, the containers, and the location all combine to give us the creative energy um, to put it all together. I think I'm going to tell us a quick story because after this whole business with the COVID and no one was allowed in, we decided to decorate the front doors of the church. Mm -hmm. And I hope everyone's noticed that because it was a way to say the church is still alive and it's still open. We just can't come in. <laughs> and um, so from March last year, we've been decorating the church seasonally as, you know, certain things for Valentine's Day. Then it was Mother's Day, whatever. We changed it up. When it got very hot in the summer, we did silks so that they didn't get the droop. And when it was very cold, we did silks too. Um, but um, you want to tell them about Atlanta? Oh, well, yes. <laughs> um, St. Philip's Cathedral in Atlanta has an annual antiques festival and flower festival. And we've attended that in person before. This particular year, uh, because of COVID, uh, they were having to do a virtual festival. And as part of their planning for this particular year, they asked different flower guilds to contribute pictures or videos of their work. And we were lucky enough to be featured on a series of our church doors were featured as part of their flower festival. So we're quite honored to be part of their annual event. And now they put our pictures up, they even commented on our Easter doors. So we're known, now known around the world in Episcopal, whatever. Well, about congratulations. Church. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, several years ago, I was joining my sister in London, my sister and nieces and nephews in London, except I couldn't get a uh, plane to London. I went to Manchester and on the road, on the road to Manchester, uh, I happened to run across a, become acquainted because we were dashing through the airport and so forth together with a florist, a, a young man who was a florist here in Chicago and he oh. was go and he was going there for the annual flower festival so I'm not sure if it was in Manchester or London but he was also on his way there uh, due to the flower well, in, in England the different cathedrals have flower festivals they take it in turn around the country and last May 
was meant it was the 800th anniversary of Salisbury Cathedral and they were going to have a big flower festival and um, I was invited to join the designers which was going to be fun but then of course it was cancelled right 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 so that was that <laughs> well well maybe next time maybe next maybe time, next time. Yeah. yeah now uh, I'm sorry to have interrupted when you were talking about the Flower Guild. Now, how many people are on the Flower Guild now? Or how many have, how many have been on the Flower Guild up until we've now? We've had up to, we've had, a, we had once, we had up to 12. And we've had people who started and then moved away or retired and new people come in. So it, it comes and goes, you know, but I think basically about 10 now, I think. Yeah, nine or ten. Yeah. So you mentioned having teams. So how many people are on a team? We usually have three teams, and um, Roger leads one, I leads one, and Judith leads one. And um, your team is three or four people, and you are on certain Saturdays, and you're in charge of buying the flowers, processing the flowers, bringing the flowers, <laughs> doing the arrangements, watering the flowers. And cleaning up. And cleaning up. <laughs> it helps if one of the team members is, is local, because um, then they can come in and water them. We like to ah. try and water them on a Tuesday and a Thursday. Um, so, so how long are the, is, is the setup of the arrangements expected to last? The, the whole week? Is that yeah, we like, it, it'd be nice if it could last a week. Um, under normal circumstances, the church gets used quite a lot during the week. Um, the school uses it. They have chapel in here. Um, I don't know what else goes on, but I think it gets used quite a lot. Um, and so we would like them to last a week. Um, so when you come in to do them on Saturday, to take the old ones down, we have to throw them away, keep what's keepable, throw away what's not. Um, but that's another reason for having a cooler is that we can keep stuff cool and it won't die so quickly. And maybe if we know that there's an event on a Saturday, or Friday, we can put the flowers in the cooler and bring them out again. Right, right, right. Well, well, you all certainly do a, a very inspiring job. You know, I think we're very fortunate to have people here at St. Chris that have so many talents in each of these different areas to to add yeah, to the beauty of the worship. Of their, own, their own style, don't yeah. they? You can tell who's done them. I, you can tell who's done the, the flowers and what they're doing and. Um, yeah. And what's interesting is we started the guilds about six years ago now. This is just before I started my business. And never has there been a flower guild in St. Chris before then. There was never a flower guild. So it's a new thing. Wow. So where did they come from before? Retail florist. Oh, so um, they were just ordered by, as in, in other words, the memorials ordered a, a flower is what it was. Yes. Um, yeah. so the, well, uh, there was a committee, including Toddy Barton. Yes, Toddy. Yes. Who called up the florist every week and ordered the flowers. I think that was how it happened. Yes. He's got a question. John. John. Roger is just way too modest. As Judith said, Toddy ordered the flowers and the flowers, something happened and they got worse. And we would have three different types of flowers in each container and they would put two roses in each container, same height, three daisies in each container and then one flower matching. And they were terrible. And one Saturday, Gretchen Zook was on the altar guild and the flowers which would arrive on Saturday, she thought they were from the last Sunday. They were dead. And so she oh. threw them out. <laughs> and then um, the janitor called her on Sunday morning and said, where are the flowers? And she said, well, they haven't been delivered. He said, oh yes, they were delivered. And so she had to pick them out of the trash before <laughs> the service started. And at that point, people started talking. And I think <laughs> Connie Cavell was senior warden and my wife, junior. And Richard said, 
not only was Roger a very good, talented organist, Roger did flowers. And so my wife asked more about that. And the next week, I picked Roger up in my station wagon. I think it must have been on a Friday. We went to Kennecott's Flowers. And then we went to some place on 18th Street, I think, and brought the flowers back to the church. And that Sunday, everybody said, good heavens, what's happened? <laughs> They're wonderful. And so Roger did the flowers ever after that. And Roger, <laughs> they were just, it was night and day. Roger's flowers were just beautiful. Thank you, John. No, he's too modest. Well, I couldn't, do without, I couldn't do without him. He makes it fun and it's, it, it's, it's boring on your own. And it's, we have a good time, don't we? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, thank you, John, for sharing that wonderful story to, to mm -hmm. let, us, let us understand the, the transition here. So mm -hmm. thanks, to, thanks to Roger and uh, Angie's talents. And speaking of your talents, I know that both of you are talented in, in other ways as well. Would you, would you like to share some of those experiences? Because I think some of them are very, very neat. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. What other talents have I got? I don't know. <laughs> play the cello. I'll play the cello. Yeah. I haven't played it for a and while. You row. And I row. Yeah. Yeah. Sing. Yeah. And uh, well, well, Angie, tell us about the rowing because I, I didn't know about the rowing until we were reading in our in our book club. We were reading The Boys in the Boat. Is mm -hmm. that the name of the book? And it was such a marvelous book. I mean, it really, it really, really was. And so the day that we discussed it in book club, Angie being a rower came in and talked to us about rowing. And I was very, very impressed. Would you share? Well, thank you. I, I rowed in college for a bit on the Thames and um, then I didn't do it. And then I started up because someone had said come and join the rowing club and I didn't think I would, could remember how to do it and I did and for four, about 14 years I've been rowing at the Chicago uh, Rowing Foundation um, they bought and built a new beautiful boathouse. I did not row last year because of Covid because they make you wear masks when I row. Yeah, I can't, yes. can't breathe. Yeah. Um, and you're a medal winner. Oh I am. Yes. Yes I'm a medal winner. <laughs> yes I got a whole row of medals. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, we were top in the in the uh, four was the top four in the nation. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, do you wow. row, does your does your club row competitively or do they just row for fun? They both. You depend which team you're on, but I've generally been on the competitive team. And um, the older you get, the more they like you because you get a better handicap. <laughs> 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 and I am the oldest rower. And been mm -hmm. there the longest, so mm -hmm. a bit of a bit of furniture now. Yeah. So that's so, one of my uh, activities. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, for me, um, all of the creative arts. Um, <laughs> I've always been involved in school in art classes, um, drawing, painting, sculpting. Um, so. Most anything involved with the arts, you'll find me at least with my thumb in that particular <laughs> area of the whole hand. He's so. a great drawer too. <laughs> so when I need something drawn, he can draw it. Like, what outfit am I going to wear? He'll just draw it. And we need to wear this. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, yeah. Well, very, when... Um, when I first came to St. Chris, I know one of the first activities that I attended was one in which your husband and you were involved, Angie. Did you want to share a little bit about that particular? And that was where I first yeah. got to know something about Angie. Well, my husband is um, a foot and ankle surgeon and um, he had a resident who was from India and she wanted to go to India to work in the this leper mission in Calcutta where her parents were posted at the time 
And um, so he went out there with my son the first time and basically did a lot of surgery on, on the lepers, which basically enables them to walk again. He did tr tendon transfers so then they could walk again and use their hands again. And they loved him so much that we went back. And then when we went back, we made it a bit more of an event because me being a physical therapist, um, I didn't realize I was gonna be working quite as hard as I did. But, um, we took a whole load of medical equipment as well that they were very lacking in and um, had a pretty remarkable couple of weeks in the leper um, hospital in Calcutta. Um, and um, we would really like to go back again. I mean, we did get five year visas, but um, now we can't go there at the moment. And then we had to wait till this, <laughs> Martin can't do surgery there unless he's under another doctor. So it's a lot of um, fiddling around, but the girl, and also translation issues. So the girl who was his helper before who got us there, she was doing the fellowships. So we had to wait for her training to finish before we could go back. But it's definitely on the books to go back. Um, and also to teach the other doctors how to do it. That was the big deal, is that he would teach them. And it's very primitive as far as, um, you know, the guy there, the nurse, has got a fly swat in one hand and a, a saw in another. And it's, I mean, it's, you know, there's no air conditioning. It, and, but we loved it. I mean, we, we had a remarkable time and uh, I'd go back there in a shop. Yeah. But I don't know when. Yeah. 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 I think so many times people think that leprosy is not even an issue anymore. Mm hmm and, and then I know seeing the pictures that you shared, uh, let us know that it really, it really remains a problem in some areas. Yep, it still is. And um, I can't imagine what COVID's doing to India, to be honest. I, I don't know how they can count the people. But I never really wanted to go to India and now I, lo and then I loved it. My mother was born and brought up in India. So I thought that was kind of fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, just do um, you have any things that you would like to add that we haven't talked about, Angie and Roger, or did you want to show us close up some of the uh, arrangements you've made? You know, maybe carry your show. iPad over there or something. Yeah, let's show you around a bit. Um, yeah, I'm going to carry the iPad, and Roger can do the talking. How about that? <laughs> okay. Excuse me. You're showing us angles we haven't seen for a while. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, let me just see if I can get this. I have to back up just a bit. Oh. That's good. Yeah. Um, for the Easter season, it is traditional to decorate the Paschal candle. And most years, we have chosen to make it uh, a symmetrical circle around. But this particular year, we decided we wanted to do something asymmetrical. So our flowers wind from up here around the candle and drip off to the side. There's lots of ivy. Sorry, photography skills are limited here. And we use the same flowers that we used in the altar arrangements. We have Alstroemeria, roses, carnations, um, and lilies somewhere. No, no lilies. No lilies in this one. Um, but this was our creative effort this particular year. We really wanted to do something different with the Paschal candle. The candle too. Yeah. And with the, um, the camera placement, we thought nobody would be coming behind the arrangement to see what the back looks like. So we made it look attractive just from the front, but it's finished off in the back too. And I don't know if anybody oh, noticed. So did that mean you didn't need to use as many flowers because you were, did, did that correct. mean you didn't need as many flowers as you might have normally because you weren't worried about the back? Yes, that's correct. So we, he's, he's actually, um, 
he, he's uh, dropped his rose, but he, the eagle often joins in. And I don't know if you noticed, he had a rose in his mouth this year. Sometimes he has a lily. Um, so these ones at the front of the altar, and the lilies are now out, so they look really nice. And that again is for the camera, so they can be. And this year, since the altar rail would not be used for communion, we were able to bring the flowers out to the altar rail itself. Um, so this is a, it gave more of a three-dimensional effect. We have flowers at the altar, at the altar rail, and at the holy table. So it's a layer of flowers. And then the- um, Show them the tulips. Mm -hmm. Show them the tulips. Look at these tulips. Aren't these peach tulips just gorgeous? And they are called French tulips because they, they're bigger and longer and they keep growing an inch a day. So that's why they're all sticking out like a Sputnik. <laughs> um, so we didn't do as many lilies, like potted lilies this year, um, for whatever reason. <laughs> Money. <laughs> Maybe normally, again. normally the lilies don't people, you know, people will then take them, people who have uh, made monetary co contributions towards the flowers then traditionally will take a pot of lilies home but this year you didn't have as many to be able to do that i suppose right mm -hmm. the um uh it is traditional that for people that are shut in and uh, not able to come to church to take some of the flowers to them at christmas and easter Okay, Very so this is, this is what they look like at the back. <laughs> Just finish off the back. So you have to, see? Uh-huh. But you didn't see that because nobody came oh. up here, you see? <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's what we did here in the church. And then we did um, the church, we did the doors as well which you won't see now, but hopefully you'll see it when you walk around the neighborhood. Um, and they need a bit of water because it's been so hot. Um, well, but, that's um, great. We have a couple of books I just want to share with you if you like things like this. This, this is um, called Church Flowers. It's written by an English lady called Judith Blacklock. And I just think she does a wonderful job in explaining how uh, the church seasons and different types of churches, cathedrals, small churches. But anyway, it's a beautiful book if anybody wants a gift. And then there's another one from our friends down in Atlanta. Laura, she wrote this book, Faith Flowers. And again, is explaining how to set up a flower guild and um, all the different seasons and equipment that you need and... The mechanics of putting them together. Yeah, but sometimes it's quite complicated business, making sure things stay in the right place. Now, now speaking of the flower guild and the ordering the flowers, so how um, how are the flowers financed? We have um, a line item in the church budget that gives us a minimum amount of money on a weekly basis. Then for the big festivals of the year, Christmas, Easter, Mother's Day, Father's Day, um, All Saints Thanks. Sunday, and Pentecost, uh, we ask for specific contributions. Uh, any denomination is welcome and we put all of that money together to buy the flowers for uh, the bigger festivals. Um, and for each week, if any family or group wants to um, provide an honor or memorial on a weekly basis, 
Um, we welcome additional monetary contributions to supplement uh, what is in the budget. Because um, what's in the budget is just basic. And if we want something really special, uh, it takes extra money to do that. So if you want to contribute to flowers, you can do it any week of the year you want. <laughs> Ron, how, have, you, how, how much on a weekly basis um, is it? Um, if if you weren't getting any extra contributions for something special, what would you say your average weekly expense is for flowers? Uh, about a hundred dollars. Uh, okay. During, during the summer, when uh, flowers are more readily available, we can sometimes do it for sixty to seventy-five, but. $100 is an average. And one reason that we try to maintain that is that in the event the Flower Guild disintegrates, you would have to go to a retail florist and you cannot get two vases of flowers for $100 for an almond. Right. So okay. we're saving the church a great deal of money and uh, we're able to customize each week whereas a retail florist would not be able to customize the flowers. They would just give us, oh, this is a basic arrangement. Oh, okay. Huh. Like, like if I wanted to remember, for example, I, both of my parents died on August 15th and I have in the past um, like requested flowers for that week. Um, can someone tell you uh, my mother's favorite flower was uh, a, a rose, a pink rose, and that you would you be able to then accommodate? Yeah. Yes, most that of the kind time of accommodate um, specific flower request as long as we know in advance. We do need a, a minimum of a week notice mm -hmm. uh, because sometimes the order has to go in early to get flowers brought in that you want. So give us a week's notice about which Sunday you want, and we'll be glad to customize an arrangement for you. Mm -hmm. Okay, with the, thank with you. With these memorials, uh, who, who maintains the list so a person could know which weeks are available or in need of a memorial? Um, well, that's that the thing. <laughs> is that in the main office or something? Yes. yes, that's the idea. Is that um, supposed to be in the main office? <laughs> yes. yes. Okay. I mean, you know, how that is, um, what with lack of staff and all. But the thing is to tell Shelley, but that I think notice is the important thing. If you tell us on a Thursday, we can't do it. We've already bought the flowers on a Tuesday. So, I mean, yeah, you can still do it, but you're going to get what you're going to get. You're right, not gonna, right. I mean, yes, you can still do it, but you can't get specific flowers. Well, I just didn't know if there, there were a calendar for the year. So let's say Liz could go sign up for the week of August 15th for her. Well, I think one thing we need to look into. At one time, yes, there was a calendar. Mm -hmm. um, and there is a parishioner here that is interested in uh, getting the flower calendar on the website. Yeah, that would also, be a good thing. Know which Sundays are available. Uh, yeah, but that's yeah. not yet. Yeah. Uh, so if you want to do something, contact Shelly or Angie, preferably both. <laughs> contact both Shelly and Angie, stating the week that you want and then any specifics. So either phone or email and we can get it all set up for you. Yeah. Communication is the issue and to make sure that your name gets in on the right week and all that sort of stuff. Right, right. Yeah, that would be good. Yeah, because I know we can do that with music uh, programs, too. So it'd be nice to be able to make sure we had the calendar and you could know which which weeks were available and hopefully blend that with the time that you wanted to make a memorial. So that's something definitely on the on the books that we need to tidy up. I'm yeah, um, just great. to say one more thing about the budget is that it's not just flowers that we're buying. We, we, you know, we have equipment too, and we've actually been very good at getting deals at, when we can find them on um, beautiful vessels, um, like these silver ice buckets that we find um, in garage sales or 
eBay. <laughs> He's the eBay king, so that's good. Um, but and it's and it's the wires and the tapes and the scissors and the things and the liquids that we use to process flowers and stuff. So there's a lot of background stuff that you need, and um, we've got we've got a nice. I think we've got a pretty good stock of nice vessels now um, that can change it up a bit, and um, so therefore we can move them around the church easier because we've got um, better mechanics. Well, where so do you keep where do you, where do you keep all your silver ice buckets and whatnot? <laughs> oh, that's a secret. <laughs> oh, oh, oh no, not that, not that I was going to borrow any, but I mean, I, I know we always seem to have storage issues within the church, so that's why I was wondering if have, you oh, had we, found some place you could keep your your yeah. uh, inventory. Really, you know, when we have this beautiful new kitchen, we'll have a locked cupboard where we can keep our poisonous chemicals and. Um, valuables in there and um, currently we we have a small closet in the Harding room and then for our oversized vessels and stands. equipment yeah. um, they, they go the in with the boar they go in with the boar's head <laughs> uh, well sort of uh, <laughs> the old bride's dressing room is now the flower storage room so our Christmas and Easter items are stored down there and anything that we can't fit in our closet up here is down there. And the closet here is like about 125 million degrees hot. So you can't have anything in there that might melt like a candle. <laughs> <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah. Well, we're, we're glad you're so knowledgeable. What, uh, do any of you all have any other questions or comments you'd like to Yeah, uh, please make? ask a question. We'd love to. Um, the group is small enough so everyone can just, if you have a question, just hop on in and unmute yourself. And I would just say where we're waiting for somebody to come in and speak is that we've been working now, what Angie and Judith, like in excess of a year on, um, on how we're going to use our shared space in the kitchen and whatnot. And we're really looking yeah. forward to that yeah. being built and, and you being able to actually have, a, have the right kind of floral refrigerator and um, mm -hmm. adequate counter space to do your work. And, and it, I mean, it's going to be absolutely wonderful when we, <laughs> when we are all in our shared, in our shared community. Mm -hmm. um, space and I think it'll be um, a lot um, nicer for you to be able to hold classes as well in the new space. Um, Absolutely, yeah, I'd love to. It'd be that. great. Mm -hmm. have, have you thought about um, the same way Richard sometimes explains something or gives a history and background on some of the music? Have you thought about for a church season asking Shelley for a little bit of space in the bulletin to be able you know, to explain? Right. We have done it a couple of times. Um, but not regularly. Um, you're a good writer. So that could be. <laughs> yes, yes, Roger. You could you could add that to your repertoire there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, I mean, if people would like to know a little bit more, and I, I mean, that's that's easy as long as they give us a little space. Yeah. Yeah, a little uh, a paragraph about whatever you've chosen to do on that day. That would be, mm -hmm. I think, that would be interesting for many people. <laughs> Part of the, the issue with that is timing. Uh, you, may, we, you may not know before the bulletin goes to bed. Yes. <laughs> so uh, that, that is one reason that we need to have a week's notice <laughs> for special <laughs> flowers <laughs> so that we can get something into the bulletin as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, perhaps when you did know, you could put something just so people are drawn to that, that might be a nice yeah. idea. It was quite nice before all this COVID thing, um, mm. Wes came up with an idea to, because we were just doing basically altarpieces and he, because we thought that that's what they wanted, but he would say, please open the church up, and just put flowers wherever you want to. So we did do that and it was really fun. And it actually makes people notice them when they're not always in the same place. Right, right. And it's symmetrical sometimes and you know, in odd places and that has been much more creative and fun to do that. Right, right, well, good. Well, are there any other questions or comments? Well, 
would there be any other, you know, as we talked about doing writing for the bulletin or flowers needing watering and stuff, is there something, are there other things that people could do to help the flower guild out besides uh, arranging the flowers? I mean, do you need transportation to pick things up? Do you need people to stop over? I'm a block away. If I knew that that water, um, the flowers needed watering once a week or something, you watering. know, just uh, in, what other ways could people help you? Watering would be really handy. Um, and the other thing I think is when we have big things like Easter and um, Christmas, there's a lot of clearing up to do. Um, prepping and clearing up, isn't there? Yeah. And we come at the oldest hours. And do you get extra people in to help, like when you're dressing the church for a major holiday, like Christmas? I mean, not this year, but but in a typical year. Well, normally we just get everybody mm -hmm. who can come from the guild. We just say like it's all hands okay. on. Yeah. So in other words, instead of one team, it's the whole the whole group. Yeah. 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 The whole group. And often the other problem with holidays is that a lot of people go somewhere else. <laughs> so mm -hmm. it's it's not everybody because some people aren't here anyway. So right. You know, you don't get the whole thing. So you have spots available, in other words. You have things that if people are interested, they can contact you and, and you can try to work. Absolutely. I will take anybody. <laughs> um, and, um, yeah. And we like to teach, don't we, Roger? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And we've taught in other places, too. We haven't just taught here, have we? That's right. We've taught at St. John's. And where else we taught? Uh, the, flat, the Garden Club. The garden club, yeah, and uh, your uh, circle of um, wedding vendors. Oh yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a group of people that I work with. I think, with. I think Caroline won. Oh, Caroline was saying goodbye. You know, okay. Oh, my Caroline. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, if if uh, we don't have any more questions, and our our hour seems to be drawing to a close here, we wanted to thank. Roger and Angie, very, very much for, for sharing with us this evening. It's been very lovely and informative. <laughs> well, thank you for asking us some great questions, Anne. It was really nice. It was a pleasure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Well, thank Again, you. Thank you. And, and, and please remember to watch your bulletins because we do, we will be scheduling more of these chats uh, mm -hmm. during this time of COVID. And also watch your bulletin because um, after next week's WASP board meeting, we'll be setting a date for our May annual meeting where we will be formally inducting our new uh, board of directors and officers for the WASP year. And, uh, you know, we occasionally have a guest that comes in and speaks at that as well. So we're going to, we are going to do a virtual one last year. We did not, but I think everybody has, um, although sometimes people get zoomed out, um, uh, everyone is familiar enough now, um, and uh, it allows a little more conversation. So I'm, I hope you'll consider attending that as well. And thank you for coming this evening. Um, I have any, did you have anything else, Angie? Yeah. Angie. Um, you said this is recorded. Yes. Um, so where would it be if I wanted to send someone to hear it? Um, I would say there, was, there should be a link on the church website. I see that it's still recording, so we should be good. And I will be giving, um, I'll be letting Peggy know tomorrow. Peggy and Shelly know that it should be out there for them to grab off the iCloud. And if they can't get it, um, maybe they can talk me through getting it and we'll try to get it on in the next few days. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Thank you.